Okay, I'm making this video in response to a comment. And I want to explore these whole principles of, because essentially, I don't think the comment was meant to be um, destructive. It was like, I disagree with saving cash money in the bank. And you know, I have friends who are rich who are always talking about investing and making money. All right, so the first thing that I wanna talk about I didn't make my money from investing. I came across this girl who literally turned $10,000 into $2 million in the stock market. And essentially this has become $7 million from investing. And she did this roughly in four years, I believe. And one of the things is she had to be buying some explosive stocks. A lot of people made a lot of money from Tesla when Tesla was on the rise before Tesla did. I didn't really get into was she doing regular stock market trading or was she doing options trading? I didn't get into that. But one thing I heard her say on the podcast, because they asked her directly, do you take money out this account? And she said, she takes 15% out. And I thought that was really interesting because 15% of 2 million is only 300,000. I found that to be very interesting because there's more to the story. Now, can you make a lot of money investing? Like this whole notion of she turned $10,000 into 2 million. I'm gonna say something. Once again, I feel that there was an element of luck. And I'm, why do I say this? If it was relatively easy to make your money work like that, why don't we have more millionaires? Her story, you know, she's been on a lot of publications. Her first name is Tiffany. And these people probably have vetted her, so it's a true story. But why is there one Tiffany and there are literally hundreds of thousands of people in the stock market who are not making that kind of money? And to this person, I want to share some of the, because like I said, you know, it was just like, I disagree with saving cash money in the bank. And for me personally, since I did not make my money investing, I made my money starting the business. Cash money in the bank was a huge, huge part of that um, because I was able to fund my first business and my second business and my third business from having cash money. And I, I have a few questions, you know, I want you to answer this since you disagree. When you say your friends are rich, what does that mean? And I'll be really specific. Is your friend worth 1 million? Is your friend worth 2 million? Is your friend worth 5 million? Is your friend worth 10 million? Or I have a better question. Do you even know how much they're worth? Because essentially to make money investing, you typically, outside the case of Tiffany, you typically need a lot of money. You typically need a lot of money in the stock markets and you can't make any mistakes. And this is why I say Tiffany got really, really lucky because she bought some hot stocks. But if typical, Tiffany's case was so pedestrian, why aren't there tons and tons of people out here who are millionaires from the stock market who started with five or 10,000? That's an exceptional story. And I'm gonna tell you why it's an exceptional story because it's very, very hard to do. But once again, one of the things that happened for me is once I had, let's call it the cash cushion, where I had hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank, this literally freed me up to do any, do things. Because here's the thing. One of the things that I have noticed talking to other successful people on the intimate level is there was this couple. He was a doctor and she was what's called a nurse anesthetist and they were married. 
and they had, they both came from conservative Christian backgrounds, which was probably one of the reasons they got married. And they pooled their money together. They had one checking account. All their credit cards were linked. And we were just sitting out and, you know, the wife was like kind of stressed. And she's like, we got a problem. I said, what do you mean you got a problem? And she's like, we got a million dollars in that checking account. I was like, that doesn't sound like a problem. That sounds like a blessing. And she's like, well, you know, since, you know, we were just sitting there talking and it was just like, this is money that accumulated because they were both high income earners. And I've seen this over and over and over again with people who are high income earners who don't have bad habits such as drugs or gambling or something like that, that literally if you're a high income earner, money will just stack up in your checking account until you deploy it in an investment. And you know, we had a conversation. I said, well, what you probably want to do is to go ahead and hire someone to manage that money. Because number one, you're both high income earners and you both, you know, they had a really nice house. He drove a Porsche, she drove like a Lexus. They were pretty happy. Um, they had two children. The kids were spoiled rotten. But typically when you earn a lot of money, it's not hard for money to actually get into your checking account. It's not hard for you to save a lot of money. Peter Thiel, when this bank, uh, Silicon Valley Bank, I believe, failed, he had 50 million in a checking account. 50 million. And one of the things that I consistently hear, and I'm not trying to be dismissive, is that people are looking for a way to leverage a little money into a large sum of money through investing. And this is one of the things. Personally, I feel that it's extremely hard, difficult, and challenging to turn $10,000 into $2 million through investing. Uh, like I said, I, I really hadn't had a chance to look if Tiffany was doing options, which, because I know she just wasn't buying stock and it appreciated that fast. This much I'm pretty sure of. She didn't just buy stock and then it just zoomed up. There was this one stock, Nivita, I think it's zooming. And if you bought it like two years ago, if you bought a lot of it, um, it's, it's really a hot stock. And if you go ahead and get at these one hot stocks and you buy it, but once again, listening to Tiffany, she said that she only takes 15% out. And there's a reason that she only takes 15% out because typically when you make your money through investing in the stock market to realize your gains, you have to sell some of your stock. And this is where creating and developing a, a business is better because in 2020, I was able to spend $200,000 on two cars Next month, I had my money back. That isn't what happens when you invest in stock. And this is one of the things. If you make a mistake investing in stock, you can blow up your account, which means you can lose all the money in your account. And you know, the more, I'm gonna actually do some research because as I sit here and I think, and I have this conversation from a financially literate standpoint, that $10,000 did not appreciate by $1,900,000 from just buying the correct stocks. That, I don't think that happened. And I, I'll probably do some investigation on that and see what she did because now she's teaching people and it should be easy to find this information. Now, if you're doing options, that's a whole different story. That's a whole different story and once again, even doing options, there's someone that I listen to on YouTube who's an options trader and he's consistently, he's consistently said, I don't have the money to make the trades I want to make. And this is someone who teaches trading options, teaches it. So one of the things I think you have to understand, because the more I think about it and I'm looking at it, 
to leverage $10,000 into $2 million in two years is an amazing amount of leverage. And the more I think about it, I think she was doing options trading, which once again, I haven't done my research. I will come back and I will reaffirm what I found out once I do the research. I should have did the research when I did this video. But personally, and this whole notion of, because why would you disagree with saving money in the bank? That's an honest question because when I hear that, and I heard this one guy who's like, I don't save no money, I invest all of my money. And this guy was, uh, what he, I forget what he did. He was some kind of, I think he was a CPA or something. And I did some research on this guy. And this guy's brokerage account was only like 750,000. This guy was like 40 years old. So he takes all of his excess cash and throws it into investments. Now, one of the things that I've done is I've run the numbers through an investment calculator buying stocks and waiting on them to appreciate. That takes decades for that to work. Decades. When you buy stock, you hold on to the stock and it goes up. That takes decades to appreciate. So more than likely for her to get this $2 million, she was doing options trading. And I'm going to say there are some people who are really skilled and technical and they do really well with options trading. But the average person who does options traders usually blows up their accounts. Now, this is why I am a big, big believer in having cash money in the bank. This represents, this is some fake money, but this represents like $40,000. In the average person, let's go ahead and like this $50,000 cash money, right? The average person doesn't have $10,000 cash in the bank. Why doesn't the average person have $10,000 in the bank cash money? Number one, income. These people can be hardworking. They can be good people. They just don't make enough money to have excess disposable cash income to stack up in their account. Literally all the money that they make goes towards their mortgage or rent or car payments or childcare, living expenses. So they don't make enough money to have disposable cash stacking up on the side. They just don't make enough money. And this is why I think that this person, once again, correct me if I'm wrong, vehemently disagrees that money in the bank is a waste. And that was in the comment. Money in the banks is a waste. And I can tell you from a personal standpoint, having money in the bank allowed me to do some things. And it may come across that I'm bragging, but I'm not. I'm just saying this to illustrate this point. Having cash money in the bank when I had my heart attack in 2019 allowed me to literally not work seven months. And then I kind of came back kind of slow but because I had cash money in the bank, I had no car payments, I had no credit card debts, I had no loans. I just had cash money in the bank. It allowed me to, my cars were paid off, I paid cash for my cars. It allowed me to weather that storm without losing my mind or losing anything. And then in 2020, because I had that cash, I was able to start off new, start off from a fresh perspective, and I was able to generate even more income because I had the cash, no debts. And you know, th this is one of the things like, I know investing is sexy. Investing sounds sexy, that you can literally take this money, your money, and your money goes into the market, your money works and it makes more money. But typically from what I have seen that most investment strategies take time to operate. Can you get rich in the stock market if you have the income? Number one, it comes back to income. The average person doesn't have enough income to put 20 to $30,000 a year 
in the stock market for 15 years. And that 30,000 for 10 years is 300,000. So that's $450,000 direct contributions in the, in the market, okay? And once you get to that level, you can get to seven figures in net worth in the stock market in close to two decades. But here's why, I'm, number one, let me go ahead and put the strategy of having cash. When I left my job at Business Environments, I had roughly $300,000 cash money in the bank. What did this money allow me to do? It allowed me to live, pay my bills, and start another business without having to borrow money, without having to stress, without having to struggle. And then I took that money and started GC Solutions, selling the new office furniture. I made a lot of mistakes. And then I took more money and started the upscale garage sale where literally I spent maybe $30,000 scaling that up. And then it became profitable. And then when I went to YouTube, I had like close to another 300,000. I actually had more because I had two houses which I sold but essentially having cash money in the bank allowed me to work on YouTube full time I was working on YouTube I was writing my book so cash money in the bank gives you options it gives you options it gives you many many options and you know, could you fund emergencies in other ways? Yes, you could use something called debt. But here's the big issue with having a lot of debt and no cash money. Let's say you went through my course and you build up a ton of business credit, say $250,000 for business credit, and you had no cash. And then you were used like 200,000 of that business credit and you were running into a problem because with, using credit, you have something called a monthly payment. And this is why I feel you need to have cash money in the bank, high levels of business credit, and high levels of personal credit. Because all that together gives you, puts you in a position where you can have more options. And once again, I want to know exactly when you say your friends are rich. Rich is very sketchy. I want to know do they have a net worth of a million, 10 million, or honestly, if you don't know, and if you don't know, say, I don't know. So this is one of the things that I feel that I'm guilty of it. I'll have a conversation with someone and I will not get into the finer details and someone could come away from having a conversation with me with some finarious notions because they didn't get the full details. So this is kind of what I think is having because you know cash money in the bank is not a waste all of the richest people i give you a good example and you can go to his youtube videos and he has videos where he says don't save money that would be grant cardone yet grant cardone bought a 20 million dollar house how did he buy a 20 million dollar house in cash he went to the bank and pulled the money out the bank that he had saved see grant Grant says this stuff, he's like, don't buy a house, don't do this. And Grant has built up this incredibly huge real estate portfolio that spends off so much cash that he literally has five or six exotic cars. He can pay cash for houses because the cash flow is coming in. But even Grant, Grant has so much cash flow coming in. And this is a story on his YouTube channel. He had a situation where he was going to have to pay the Internal Revenue Service a lot of money. He had $50 million in the bank. Grant Cardone, don't save cash, right? And he took that cash and he bought his first private jet. Let me say that again really, really slowly. Grant Cardone had $50 million cash in the bank and that's how he bought his first private jet. Once again, Grant has many videos. Don't save cash, invest, invest. But Grant Cardone, how did Grant Cardone have $50 million in the bank if he wasn't saving cash? 
How could he have $50 million in the bank if he wasn't saving cash? How could he have that? I mean, this is one of the things that when you become financially literate and you hear certain things and you can calculate and you can do math and you're like, that doesn't sound, it doesn't sound plausible. Because with Grant Cardone, go to his YouTube channel and go to the front of the channel and put in saving cash and he has tons of videos where he says, don't save cash. But Grant Cardone has to save cash. Why? When Grant Cardone goes out and buys an apartment complex, he's required to put 25% down. Where'd that 25% come from? Cash money in the bank. But Grant will tell you over and over and over again, don't save your cash, but Grant Cardone, and this is something that you can prove by watching his videos. He had $50 million in the bank. When he goes out and buy a $100 million apartment complex, he's got to put $25 million down. Where does this money come from? Cash money in the bank. Please dispute that. Go to his videos, watch it, and ask yourself, where did Grant get this money to put down for the private jet? Where did Grant get this money to put down for the apartment complex? Cash money in the bank that he saved. See, once again, you know, I, I get real passionate about this because there are a lot of people who, let me be real careful how I say this. Um, there's a lot of people with this dream, let's call it this dream, of turning a little bit of money into a lot of money. And this is why this whole notions of saving cash money in the bank because one of the things I teach you in the money management course is to have a long-term emergency fund. And I recommend having a year's money in there. Why do I recommend having a year's money in your emergency fund? If you have a year's money in there and you use three months, and you still got nine months and then you find another job and you stop tapping into your emergency fund and then you start adding back to it, it's, it's just cash money in the bank makes your life easier it reduces stress, it puts you in a really good position. It allows you to do things that the normal humans just can't do. You just, just can't do. So, you know, to the person who left this comment, who disagreed, once again, what are their net worths? And if you don't know, just say, hey, I have no clue. And that's perfectly fine, because I know from personal experience for you to invest in the stock market, from a buy stock, hold stock position. It takes decades for that money to make you rich. And once again, with Tiffany, I guarantee you, and I will come back and talk about Tiffany, um, I guarantee you she's doing options trading. I I'm almost 100% sure of it. And she must be really skilled in doing it because for you to leverage $10,000 into two million in two years, that didn't come from appreciation, even if you bought extremely hot stock. Why? She talks about it. She had $10,000. And if you bought Tesla, when it was like, I think it was like Tesla was almost bankrupt. So you bought $10,000 divided, let's say it was 67. And that would have gotten you, so you had $10,000 divided by, let's say Tesla was $67. So that would have got you 2,000 shares of Tesla at $10,000, right? And let's say Tesla went to 350 minus 67. All right, so that was times 2,000. That's 566,000 with a $10,000 buy-in. And I'm just throwing numbers out here because, um, but even at $10,000 and Tesla zoomed up to 350, still not two million still not two million so more and more that i think about it because like essentially if you were to actually go to an investment calculator investment calculator get into an investment calculator and let me just show you starting the amount and let's just say you're putting 2,500 per month 
and let's go ahead and go 20 years and let's let's move up the return to 10 percent let's move it it's six percent for a reason and let's go with 2500 i don't know why i keep wanting to hit nines and okay so for 20 years if you're putting 2500 bucks a month away for 20 years with a 10 percent return your total contributions are 600,000, and after 20 years, you have 1.8 million. I'm pretty sure that Tiffany was doing options trading. I'm 100% sure of that, and I'll, I'll come back and talk about that. But typically, one of the big things with investing in, um, let me go ahead and shut that down. One of the big issues with investing is it takes time. And if you're going to have fast investing, it's very, very risky. And, you know, all, you know, in the comments, all they talk about is investing their money to get a return. I mean, do these friends have jobs? Do they have business? Are they highly paid? See, these are the pertinent little details that need to be added to the conversation so we can have a rich conversation so we can really talk about making money. Because once again, my personal experience is I made the most amount of money from starting a business and running a business for the last 24 years. Personal experience. This is something that I can look at. I can go through my bank statements. I can look at my tax records. I can look at my credit card statements. I mean, I literally have several credit cards with 50,000, a few with $75,000 limits. And you know how I got those credit cards? Because American Express actually looked at my bank accounts. They didn't just like, bam, you know, here's a $50,000 bam, here's $75,000 They actually looked at my bank accounts. So they actually saw the money that was going through my bank accounts. So for you to actually get rich, and you know, once again, I can understand having a lot of credit and I can actually run you through a scenario. Like, let's say you got $500,000 in personal credit, and let's say you got a million dollars in business credit, and you have no cash, but you deploy $250,000 off your business credit, and then you use other business credit to make your monthly payments for maybe say a year, and then you start a business, and then you eventually pay all that off because you started a business. That can work. But if you've got like a normal person's credit profile where you got maybe 60,000 to maybe 100,000 total personal credit, what's gonna happen once you start using it? Your credit score is gonna tank. Your credit score is gonna get low. So this is why I would say if you had $500,000 worth of personal credit and you had a million dollars worth of business credit and you took 250 and then you started a business and then you got to the point where you were generating the income where you could pay back that business credit and then you actually got to a point where you could pay back that business credit and extract the profit yeah that works but once again please provide more details and i'm gonna put this video under there and it's like watch the whole video and come back with more details because but first to have a discussion we got to get into the details we have to have more in-depth details because I have no clue to what your friends do. I have no clue to what your friends' net worths are. And maybe you do, maybe you don't, I don't know. But we need to have that information before we get all caught up in this investing. Because like I said, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna talk about Tiffany because like, you know, just sounds like she's doing options. And that's, and doing options is not investing. That's not an investment strategy. That's a stock market strategy, but it's not an investing strategy. It's not. All right. So I got some stuff that's going to be coming up. So be on the lookout. Stay tuned. And I will talk to you guys in the next video.